Hi, my name is Christopher Vescopoulos of Medical Specialist Associates, and thank you for watching this clip upon how to assess the appropriate placement of an impella using echocardiography. Thanks for watching, and thanks for learning with us. Medical Specialists Associates, making medical education more accessible. Hi, my name is Christopher Vescopoulos of Medical Specialist Associates, and in this topic, I'm going to present the echocardiographic assessment of an impella. So the first question we need to be on the same page with is exactly what is an impella? An impella is actually not a complicated device. Basically all an impella is is three different segments. We have a pump motor and that pump motor is a rotating device that basically sucks blood up into what's called the blood inlet area and it has the blood come out what's called the blood outlet area. And in just a moment, we'll see this in its appropriate anatomic structure, the heart, and it will become clear how these inlet and outlet structures work. Now, there are different sizes of an impella, and the different sizes we can basically think of as anywhere from a 2.5 to a 5. And what these numbers mean is liters of cardiac output per minute. And so in the average individual, we're going to think of the cardiac output to be about 5 liters a minute. And that would mean that if we put in a size five impella, we could basically supply that individual's entire cardiac output. And if we put in a smaller size, say a 2.5 or a 3.7, we're still providing support, we're just providing partial support. So we're expecting that individual's heart to be able to contribute at least somewhat. So here is that picture within the heart, as I was mentioning, and this will give you a, really a crystal clear idea of exactly how this works. And so up here is gonna be our outlet area and our pump motor. And when that pump motor again rotates, it's going to suck blood in here. And this inlet area uh, in here is within the left ventricle. And it's gonna have the blood come out up here in the outlet area. And now this is gonna be separated by the aortic valve. That's really important for appropriate positioning, which we'll see, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the inlet area is below the aortic valve and ideally within the middle of the left ventricle to be able that it can have optimal inflow of blood without getting caught up against a wall, um, et cetera. So, Let's get a little more specific now in terms of what is an appropriate placement for the optimal functioning uh, of the impella. What do we need? Well, again, we're gonna remember that we have the aortic valve here. Now, ideally, the inlet area should be about 3.5 centimeters from the aortic valve. And the concept there is that if it's about 3.5 centimeters from the aortic valve, it should be pretty much in the middle of the left ventricle. And so therefore, it'll be able to have maximum blood come into it. And again, it's not gonna hit up against the septal wall or another wall of the left ventricle and then um, prevent blood from coming in. Now, another really important thing is, is not just placement, but you're gonna need to make sure that your patient is euvolemic because if the patient is hypovolemic, then the left ventricle might not be filling and then again, this inlet area could get sucked up against a wall because of hypovolemia. Now, in some individuals, we might have difficulty when we go over our measurement scheme upon you know, using calipers that see this inlet valve be exactly or thereabouts within 3.5 centimeters from the aortic valve, and you might have some confusion. And in those you know, rather non-frequent situations when that happens, what you can do is you can put color flow Doppler on. And basically what you want to see is when the blood comes out of the outlet area up here, it shouldn't flow back if you have a competent aortic valve into the left ventricle. So there, putting color flow Doppler on up in this region in the proximal aorta could be helpful. So when we're going to examine the positioning of the impella, what is ideally the uh, echocardiographic view that we should get? Well, it should really be here our parasternal long axis view. So for a reminder for some individuals, we're going to place our probe somewhere between the second and fourth intercostal space here. We're gonna have our arrow pointing here towards the right shoulder. And this should be the view that we should get here where we're looking at the right ventricle, the left ventricle, the proximal aorta, and the left atrium here. So to show 
uh, as a refresher what this parasternal long axis view we would look here live. Here we see the right ventricle up here. Here we see the left ventricle down here, the proximal aorta, the left atrium. Here is aortic valve here, and here's our mitral valve right here. So now I have this picture here with the impella in. And so basically, again, we're seeing here the right ventricle. However, in this particular view here, there happens to be a pacing wire in, so I just didn't want to confuse you with that. Here now we can see the impella um, coming in. We have the aortic valve here, and this is going to be very important to know where it is because that's going to be one of our starting points for measurement. And here we see our left atrium and our mitral valve uh, down here. So now we're going to see an overlay in just a second. So in order to give you a clear understanding, here's that overlay where we can see the impella coming into view now within our echocardiographic picture by using our anatomic overlay. And again, we're going to make sure that the inlet area is right in the middle of the left ventricle and that outlet area is above the aortic valve. So now coming back to our last slide here, how we're exactly going to do our measurement well, we're continuing to get our pictures here. And in just a moment, we're gonna pause this and we're gonna to start to scale our pictures back. And what we're looking for is the exact placement of the aortic valve and the placement of the inlet. So here again, you can see that this is an okay view. Perhaps maybe it could be a little more optimized, but as long as you can see here, the aortic valve where it begins the ring and the inlet, then you'll be able to find a picture in which then you'll be able to put your calipers on. And here, that's what I'm going to show here. I'm putting my calipers on. I'm putting one end here at the aortic valve, and I'm having the other end here at the inlet. And again, I want a value of about 3.5. Now, if you're somewhere within three and four, that's probably okay. Again, you could put color flow on if you wanted to and just make sure that all the flow is here above um, uh, the aortic valve. But as long as it's again between three or four, you should be fine. Thank you so much for watching and learning with us today. If you're interested in taking this class for credit, or if you're interested in our other services, such as our direct clinical care services, please visit our website at www.med-specialist.net or click on the link in the description below. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on our most current content and educational opportunities.